is it difficult for you to date with your history? Uh, yeah, it's not an easy <laughs> task. It's, it's How do you not, navigate that? It's it's not an easy task. Um, I don't really navigate it. Uh, this this is it this is a tricky situation <laughs> um it's a it's a failed attempt so i have men in my life that i enjoy and that i trust and that as long as they're single they're in my life whether we have dinner whether we hang out at my place uh you know those are my sexual friendships um there's one person that has been woven in my life for 13 years he's truly the one person he's my person he's my number one person but there's moments where um, I kind of shut him out for a period of time because I'm being stubborn about something. As you see me turn the necklace, that's when you know I'm telling the truth. Um, and but but you know I just saw him last week, and when I see him, I'm the most comfortable in my skin with him. Mm. He has no issues or qualms with what I've done. He looks at me as a, a self-made you know success story. So it takes a lot to meet somebody that sees me that way. Mm. When I explain it to young women interested in getting in the business, I run by all the reasons why I think maybe they shouldn't first. Mm. And then we try to surface to why I think they should, if we get there, whether it's their family, their friendships. But I tell them, for the rest of your life, every man you meet is going to want to be with you, but they're not going to want to be with you. What a lie. But it's real. Yeah. They want to be with you, yeah. but they don't want to be with you. They don't want to be your emergency contact number. They don't want to bring you around their family. They don't want to have you around all their friends. But they want to be with you. So that is a is a real thing. And so I never thought that the internet would happen. You know, when we were on film, we were living double lives. Nobody knew who we were. Uh, then the internet happens. I'm like, okay, double life, no more. And it, and it's tricky. I can't meet a stranger. I can't be on a dating app. I meet people through people. I meet trusted sources through my friends. And usually, you know, we'll hang out for a period of time. I've tried to over the past three years since I've been here, I tried dating seriously twice. And the first time, uh, six months in, I found out he had a live-in girlfriend. Oh, wow. Okay, so he was lying to me the entire time. Uh, and we, we've made it past that. We're cordial now. You know, it is what it is, but I confronted him on it when I found out. And I, like, we had this conversation. That's not, but then it made me feel more human because it was my first time dating as a regular woman mm -hmm. and looking at myself as not being in the industry anymore. Oh. And that's a normal thing that happens to women. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? This is relatable. <laughs> I feel like one of you all. I feel so normal now that I've been cheated on. Like, this is so great. <laughs> and then the second one, I, I, it was a couple of months and I realized that I ended that because he complained too much. So mm -hmm. now I've got someone who likes me, who doesn't care about my past, who isn't judgmental, and this could have been another good fit. But he complained all the time. And like, don't complain about work when you're not working anymore. Don't complain about work late at night. Like, if you want to have a talk, we'll do a walk and talk in the park, air your shit out. But if it's late at night and we should be having sex or watching a movie and you're still complaining, I can't. I just can't. So I'm not, I'm not lonely. I don't feel a void. Um, but I would say, you know, it's very important that somebody look at how difficult it is to date, especially when you're someone as popular as me. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll, I'll meet somebody and I'll think they're cool. And then I realize they're way too much of a fan for me to be comfortable having sex with, or they'll bring up a bunch of other porn stars that they know. And I'm like, okay, we're done. We're yeah. done here. You're a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you should have been in line at Exotica. We're <laughs> never going to spend time alone together. Um, but it's a thing and there's a security issue. You have to always be thinking about your safety as well. And that's something that you're always compromising by being so well known one way. Yeah. But yeah, dating's kind of tough. Um, my fingers are always crossed that 13 year old guy is the guy that's in my life forever. We're thir not 13 years. Did I say 13 year old? <laughs> my God, please delete that. I mean, 13 year guy. There's been a guy in my life for 13 years. Um, and you know, I, when I met him, I felt that with him, I yeah. felt like this guy is going to be in my life forever. Yeah. And, uh, it just so happens that every year I tell my friends like, no, this is the year where I'm not going to see him anymore. And I'm like, <laughs> well, we're going to do another year of this. <laughs>
And he was just with me for our three days. And we had a great time. Well, I hope that works out for you. And <laughs> We're the same age. We both have no kids. We both were married at the exact same years of our lives. We both got divorced. Like he's oh, wow. super, yeah. So he's a minimalist. Like every, all the signs point to this should work. <laughs> well, hopefully we'll, we'll do this again in 13 years and we'll, we'll have oh my God. A, a better story to tell on that front.